By now, you must have uh, come to the realization that I, I'm a fan of funny songs. But I have found that sometimes uh, the humor in a song can derive as much from the singer and the circumstance under which I heard it as from the song itself, which is, which is the case with this one. And there's a story behind it. Uh, the unlikely singer of this song was a fellow by the name of Robert J. Lertzema. Does that ring any bells with anybody? Oh, <laughs> we have some cognoscenti in the audience. You, you will especially appreciate this. Robert J. Lertzema was a classical music DJ out of WGBH Boston. And uh, he hosted a show called Morning Pro Musica, which was syndicated to a whole bunch of other NPR stations around the country, including WNYC, where I listened to him as a youth. Robert J. Lertzma was a character. He had this rich, deep, resonant voice, replete with profundity and ponderosity and no small measure of pomposity, <laughs> all delivered with strategic pauses <laughs> over a delicate background soundtrack of recorded bird songs. And now, tweet, tweet, tweet. A Divertimento by Leopold Mozart, <laughs> performed by the Berlin Chamber Orchestra. <laughs> Under the baton. <laughs> I had this wonderful mental picture of him in the broadcast studio wearing, it, wearing a, a, a tuxedo. But underneath it all, Robert J. was putting this all on. And we all knew he was putting this on. And he knew we knew he was putting this It was this, this compact that he, that he had forged between himself and his audience, this shared in-joke, and I just lapped it all up. I loved every minute of it. So I was somewhat taken aback when I actually ran into him in person sometime in the late 70s, serving in the unlikely role as an MC at the legendary Fox Hollow Folk Festival in upstate New York. And it turned out that this barrel-chested voice emerged from this little roly-poly guy that looked like nothing so much as a three-quarter scale Santa Claus in bib overalls. <laughs> and to my delight and surprise, it turns out that he was a folky. He knew the music. He knew the musicians and the background and the lore and the history and the whole milieu. He was one of us in disguise. Now, he was emceeing a workshop stage and, and um, it was like in between sets, and he had done all the announcements and coming attractions, and thanks to the sponsors and stuff like that. And it was still eight, 10 minutes before the next session was due to, uh, to, to begin. And he had nothing left to, on this agenda to say. And for a radio guy, dead air is an anathema. So he we got flustered. He said, oh, what? I, I don't know what to say. What, what shall I say? What shall I do? Some wag in the back of the audience stands up and hollers, do a cartwheel! <laughs> Lertzema does not bat an eye. He bat, puts the microphone back in the stand, step onto this long bench that runs the whole width of the stage and does a perfect Nadia Comaneci cartwheel along the bench. What? <laughs> it seems as though in his youth, Rob J. Lertzema had spent some time as a circus clown and acrobat. <laughs> There was more to Robert J. Lerson than met the ear. I next ran into him some 20 years later, again emceeing a folk festival, this time uh, the, the late lamented Champlain Valley Festival in Vermont. Only this, and it was again in between sessions, but he had figured out a way to, to, to fill in the dead air. He says, well, I have a song for you. Well, it's a joke. Actually, I won't do it in his voice, it'll take all night. He says, a fellow walks into a piano bar and orders a drink. And the piano player has a monkey that goes around the bar with a tin cup collecting tips. And the monkey sees uh, him arrive, ambles down the bar, squats directly in front of him with his cup out, in the process sitting directly on his glass. So our hero gets pissed off, stomps up the bar, slams his fist on the piano, says, hey, you know your monkey's got his balls in my martini? And the piano player says, no, but if you hum a few bars, I might be on. <laughs> OK, says Lertzema, cute joke. But I thought there was a song in it. <laughs> so I wrote it. <laughs> 
And he proceeds to sing in this utterly tuneless basso ridiculoso and a really bogus Scots dialect, this actually rather clever song, as near as I could make it out to the melody of the Oscar Mayer Wiener commercial. Oh, your monkey's got his balls and my martini. Da -da 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 -da. And it was pretty funny. But what was really funny was that off to the side of the stage, outside the range of Lertzimer's peripheral vision, the stage is being signed for the hearing impaired. <laughs> <laughs> now pause for a moment to contemplate and, and remark upon the stunning visual aspects of this situation. The signer is going, your monkey's got his balls in my martini. The audience is falling on the floor. Lurtzimer thinks he's being a stitch. <laughs> so every time the chorus comes around, he gets more broad, he delivers it more broadly. The signer gets more emphatic. The monkey's balls get bigger. The audience roars louder. <laughs> And be, that by the time it's all done, there isn't a dry seat in the house, and Lurtzum is ready to give up the radio and go into stand-up. It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. My cheeks hurt. My stomach hurt from that. i got to get the words to that song. Of course, these days, you can get the words to any song all the way back to the marching song that Hannibal used to cross the Alps. But this is all <laughs> pre-Google. So... When I got home, I wrote to Robert J., care of WGBH Boston, telling him how much I liked the song and would he mind, you know, sending me the lyrics. Never heard back. They probably threw my, his, you know, filed my, my letter along with all the rest of the stalker mail. So about three, four weeks later, I was talking to Michael Cooney, well-known, uh, traditionally oriented singer back then, um, telling him about this incident. Cooney says, leave it to me. Two, three days later comes in the mail a padded envelope from Michael Cooney with a cassette, remember cassette? A with a cassette inside <laughs> labeled Robert J. Lertzimer, singer-songwriter. <laughs> and there is a recording of a very drunk Robert J. Lertzimer singing Your Monkey's Got His Balls in My Martini, which I have subsequently learned and will now sing for you. And I implore you to <laughs> sing along on the chorus. And if you happen to know ASL, sign along on the chorus as I sing, Oh, your monkey's got his balls in my martini. Hey, sitting there just like a missing link. Hey, has got his ruddy ass planted firmly in me glass, which makes it quite impossible to drink. Oh, your monkey's got his balls in my martini. Me lemon rind is twined up his tail. And if he don't get up and leave, I've got good cause to grieve. God forbid I'll have to shift to beer or ale. Oh, your monkey's got his balls in my martini. How I hate to see a good drink go to waste. It's been an hour more or less, and I truly must confess, I'm concerned that it might modify the taste. Oh, your monkey's got his balls in my martini. He's got to get up soon, but who knows when. Perhaps when nature calls, he'll remove his bloody balls, and I can start me serious drinking once again. Yeah.